Brass tacks from Zaka Jacob. There's been a long line, an exodus, if you will, of leaders from the Congress Party towards the BJP, and it's been going on for a number of years now. If you go back four, five years ago, the likes of Jyotiraditya Sindhya, R P N Singh, Jitin Prasada, and now more recently, in the last few days, you've had Vijinder Singh, Sanjay Nirupam, and even a Gaurav Vallabh who's jumped ship from the Congress to the BJP. Now, the Congress Party's familiar argument against this is that the BJP is using agencies like the CBI, IT, ED, etc., to scare many of their candidates and many of their leaders into joining the BJP. And while to some extent that might be true, certainly the leaders who have joined in the recent past, just in the last few days or so, whether it's a boxer Vijinder Singh, whether it's a Sanjay Nirupam, or even for that matter Gaurav Vallabh, none of these leaders. Have any CBI, IT, ED cases against them? So that argument of using these agencies to try and drive the exodus of leaders from opposition to BJP has a limited shelf life or a limited sale value. But having said that, the question also remains: Is ideology now dead and irrelevant in politics? Because yesterday's Congress seems to be today's BJP. That is the contention from the opposition parties. The BJP was the party with the difference. Is there any more difference between the BJP and the rest of the field? And the BJP's argument is ultimately, if the Congress is a sinking ship, and if leaders one by one are deserting a sinking ship, then can you blame them or their political ambitions? But first, let's bring you up to speed with the story that has happened today. There was an invitation to attend the Pran Pratishta of Prabhu Shri Ram. The Congress party is writing that we will not attend. For Ishwar ke darshan karne ke liye Ishwar ki anumati zaruri hoti hai. Aur jab tak Ishwar ki anumati nahi hoti, wo darshan nahi kar sakta. This election is Congress versus old Congress, not Congress versus BJP. Basically, the way Congress party is working in Delhi and from Delhi to Mumbai. It is not working out very well, actually. So party hopper है, एक party से दूसरे party आने वाला। अगर ticket नहीं मिला, तो ऐसा statement देने से कोई फायदा नहीं है। Congress party नहीं, एक पारिवारिक company है। इसमें देश हित नहीं, इसमें समाज हित नहीं, केवल अपने परिवार का हित देखा जाता है। आज BJP में शामिल हो रहा हूँ और एक तरह से कहते घर वापसी हो रही मेरी कहते कि इंग्लिश में कहा वाता गुड टू बी बैक All right, so is it a fight for political survival or is it a dumping of political ideologies as it were? The exodus continues right ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. The recent departures from the Congress camp. Uh, are those who are not facing any legal case, there's no IT, ED, CBI, etc. against any of these individuals, which brings to focus the changes that they have made against the party high command. Those leaving the party say that there are very few opportunities at the top, but the Congress has called them overambitious and restless. Also, those leaving say that the issues that they are raising are, are regressive and do not resonate. In fact, the Congress parties. Uh, oft repeated accusation against the leadership is they are raising issues which do not matter to the people, to the electorate. The Congress counters that by saying it's a battle of ideologies with the BJP. Those leaving say that the Congress is taking the wrong stand on many issues, particularly on issues of religion, on Hinduism, on attending the Ram Mandir Pran Pratishta. Gaurav Valla, for example, cited the Sanatan storm for his exit, saying you can't expect spokespersons to be giving. Day in and day out, anti-Sanatan sound bites. The Congress has countered this by saying that their fight continues against the forces of hatred and for the cause of secularism. Those leaving the party say the party has become rudderless. It suffers from weak leadership. They often cite the Gandhi family and its poor leadership as reasons for why they are leaving. The Congress's counter is that the weak jump ship 
when things become hard. Which also brings to focus the organizational issues within the Congress party, which has made several leaders nervous before the 2024 elections. And it seems like Malikarjun Kharge's role, it remains limited to that of Congress party chief. The Congress continues to rally behind the Gandhis. The Gandhis are the principal and star campaigners as well as key decision makers in the Congress party. The Congress party's political footprint continues to shrink. It's got presence now only in a few states, largely limited to southern India. In northern India, they're an also ran player. There's been no serious course correction despite repeated poll debacles. And there was a statistic out of 50 plus assembly elections that have happened since 2014, the Congress has lost more than 45. The alliance dynamics remain in chaos as state and national leaders are unable to agree on a cohesive narrative. Moreover, controversial statements, whether it is on Hinduism, whether it is on female leaders, all of this is just giving more and more ammunition to the BJP. So the question then is, are many of these leaders leaving as the Congress alleges because of ITCBI ED pressure? Or are they simply leaving because they don't see any good fortunes in the Congress party, they see the Congress party as a sinking ship and therefore for their own political interests and perhaps political survival, they are jumping ship. We'll be joined uh, in a moment uh, here in our studios by Tuin Sinha, who is the national spokesperson of the BJP. Lalit Mehta is managing editor of Money Control. Ashwarya Mahadev is a uh, Congress party spokesperson. Rashid Kidvai is author and senior journalist. Ashwarya Mahadev, you know, I... I I, I'm willing to accept to some extent the argument that the Congress party says in the case of Ashok Chavan or other leaders that look, BJP has unleashed the agencies against them. That's why they're scared and they're leaving. But in the last 24 hours, whether it's a Vijender Singh, whether it's a Gaurav Vallav, whether it's a Sanjay Nirupam, there are no agencies or cases against these individuals. Why then, pray, are they still leaving the Congress party and joining the BJP? Zaka, two responses to that. Politics today is not altruistic, it is not a philanthropic exercise and for a lot of people, their aspirations may not be met by what the Congress party is currently offering them. Whether they are aspiring beyond their capability and capacity is not for me to comment. So a lot of people, you know, when they do leave, having been given a lot of opportunity, would like to blame and point fingers because it makes it look better as a perception that they left for some just cause and not because of what their aspirations was. But... That may be a few certain cases, but that does not take away from the fact that it is a given reality that there are a lot of leaders who the BJP, including the Prime Minister himself, had spoken about a particular leader in a booklet that came out. And mere days later, the same particular leader went and joined them. The same thing with Himanta Biswa Sarma, the BJP leadership, in a Sam had accused him of the Lewis Burgess scam so seriously, and then he joined them, and then you see that it disappeared. Just because there are people leaving who don't have cases because of their aspirations and the ends that they want met does not at any point take away from the fact that it is a given reality that no, no, seven I'll ask I'll ask Tuhin Sina about oh, these leaders you allege are joining because of coercive pressure from the agencies but you admittedly said just now uh, Ashwarya that in your party you are not able to address the ambitions of certain individuals and that's why they are leaving now if you are you not know, able to address the ambitions of certain individuals in your party you can't blame the BJP for that because clearly they're going to the BJP because they feel that the BJP will address their ambitions. Zaka, at the place that India is today, there is no place for the opposition or political parties on our side of the spectrum to work for their own or workers there to work for their own individual ambition. There is a responsibility to be workers first and then ask for their gains. They should not ask what the party can do for them at this point, but has to work tirelessly because the idea no of India is a threat. That is what my leadership has conclusively said time and time again. The aspiration for power is natural to any human being the, but the aspiration for power cannot trump the responsibility I, One I has like to the way you have spun the famous Kennedy religion. quote about ask what not the country can do for you but what you can do for your country but be that as it may let me ask Tuin Sina who is joining us here in our studios and Tuin you know it's great to have you here because the number one state where there is this exodus of non-BJP leaders into BJP is the state of Maharashtra, where you come from. The Indian Express had a story recently saying 25 leaders who joined from 
कांग्रेस एंड एनसीपी एंड शिवसेना अदर ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज इन टू द बीजेपी आउट ऑफ आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑफ दैम द केसेज ऑफ गॉन टू कोल्ड स्टोरेज अ मेजोरिटी ऑफ दैम लार्ज मेजोरिटी ऑफ दैम हैपन टू बी फ्रॉम महाराष्ट्र वेल जका यू नो कांग्रेस मैन टूडे आर नॉट जस्ट लीविंग कांग्रेस टू ज्वाइन द बीजेपी दे आर विलिंग टू ज्वाइन एनी अदर पार्टी बी इट एकनाथ शिंडे इस पार्टी बी इट शिव शिवसेना बी टी एम सी they just want to get rid of the present day congress and i have said this before today would say it with greater responsibility and conviction that the condition of present day congress the congress has reduced itself to a fringe people just want to escape it and you know uh, i get reminded of visuals of afghanistan when the taliban took over people were clinging in onto planes to escape so people nobody wants to stay in the present day congress and the reason is threefold number 1 their anti sanatan mentality there are in, and i will give you instances of each you know the, their inability to take a stand on the pran pratishtha issue the fact that rahul gandhi pulls up common people on the street and says aapka naam kya hai and then tries to you know invoke caste uh, divisions among the community the pro radicalization men, by, mindset yesterday if you recall in wayanad when he was filing his nomination papers congress did not even have the moral courage to put its own flag across because iuml apparently insisted on putting their flag which had some resemblance with pakistan flag when congress said we can't put your flag the deal was that neither of their flags could go so this is how they have reduced themselves to being a puppet of iuml in kerala and number 3 thereby their inability to take a stand in national interest whether it is on the abrogation of article 370 or rahul gandhi going traveling live by one of the leaders who has recently jumped ship from the congress to the bjp vijinder singh is former olympian former boxer vijinder bhai bahut bahut dhanyawad hamare sath judne ke liye ye bataiye kal tak to aap congress ke sath the congress ke ideology ke sath the ye mana jata tha ki aap rahul gandhi ke kareeb hi hain lekin kya hua 24 ghante mein aapne matlab palat di आपने कांग्रेस से बीजेपी ज्वाइन कर ली किसकी वजह से मतलब क्या आपके पीछे भी आईटी सीबीआई ईडी वगैरह पड़े है क्या नहीं भैया कहते कि कहते हमारी कहते कि जीवन तो कहते खुली किताब है कोई भी आके पढ़ सकता है और मेहनत करके यहाँ तक पहुंचे हैं मेहनत करना चाहते हैं और मेहनत से कहते कि आगे बढ़ना चाहते हैं मेहनत से लोगों का भला करना चाहते हैं यूथ का भला करना चाहते हैं जो यंग जनरेशन जो खिलाड़ी है उनका भला करना चाहते हैं इसलिए हम भारतीय जनता पार्टी में आए और रही बात इस बात की कि मैंने कांग्रेस क्यों छोड़ी तो तकरीबन पाँच साल मैंने इंतजार किया मैं सोचा कि मैं कुछ करूंगा पार्टी में रहकर कहीं बुलाया जाएगा मेरे को कहीं आ, कोई जहां एक स्पोर्ट सेल है या कोई भी यूथ है कांग्रेस से वहां पद पद मिलेगा लेकिन आ, एक साल दो साल पाँच साल तो फिर टाइम निकलता जा रहा था मैं मैं घर पे बैठ कर नहीं हो सकती सब चीज़ें ये आपको जनता के बीच में जाना पड़ेगा लोगों से मिलना पड़ेगा मैंने बहुत सारे प्रोटेस्ट भी किए उनको लेकर लेकिन आ, लास्ट में आ, उन्होंने कहा कि आप मथुरा चले जाइए आप ये कर लीजिए वो कर लीजिए मैं क्या सर मैं ऐसे नहीं होता और आ, फिर हम कहते हैं कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी के साथ आए वहाँ हमारे नरेंद्र मोदी जी हैं जो कि इतने मेहनती हैं जितना अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं यूथ के लिए तो हम चाहते हैं कि वहाँ उनका कुछ वहाँ जाके हम कुछ काम करें और यूथ को दिखाएं कि हमारे अंदर कितनी प्रतिभा है लेकिन विजेंद्र भाई ये भी बता दीजिए कि मतलब आपने कल बीजेपी ज्वाइन कर ली परसों तक आप राहुल गांधी और कांग्रेस पार्टी के ट्वीट्स तो आप रिट्वीट कर रहे थे किसी पत्रकार ने आपसे ये सवाल पूछा तो आपने बोल दिया कि मैंने सो लिया सोने के बाद उठाया <laughs> और उठने के बाद मैंने मैं, yeah, मे, मे, yeah. मेरा द, मतलब मन परिवर्तन हो गया तो उसके बारे में कुछ कहना चाहेंगे आप उसके बारे में बस एक ही है कि एक सवाल को बार बार पूछ रहे हैं लोग क्यों ज्वाइन की क्यों ज्वाइन की क्यों ज्वाइन की क्यों तो भैया फिर वो कहते हैं कि बॉक्सर अंदर वाला निकलने वाला होता है तो फिर उसको ऐसे वो बोलना पड़ता है कि मैं क्या भैया कर ले कर ले कर ली ज्वाइन नहीं अब कर ले क्या करेगा तो फिर ऐसे थोड़ी ना होता है कि आप मैंने ऑलरेडी बताया कि मैंने क्यों आया हूँ मैं किस लिए आया हूँ स्टेज पे सब बातें हुई लेकिन बार बार को उस चीज को कुरेदना तो पोख करना उस चीज को तो भैया हमने भारतीय जनता पार्टी ज्वाइन करी है हिंदुस्तान के उज्जवल भविष्य के लिए तो हम चाहते हैं कि बहुत सारा काम करें यहाँ रहकर और जनता की आवाज बने लेकिन जनता को आपको ये भी विश्लेषण देना पड़ेगा कि आपने तो नरेंद्र मोदी और उनके सरकार के खिलाफ काफी सारे बातें आपने पुराने वक्त में आपने दिया है चाहे वो रेस्लर्स के मामले में हो चाहे वो किसान के प्रोटेस्ट के बारे में हो तो क्या वो सब भूल जाए हम लोग नहीं मैंने उसके ऊपर सबकी सफाई दे दी थी कि मैंने 
क्यों कब कैसे क्या किया था और मैं खिलाड़ी होने के नाते मन के साथ पहले भी था अब भी हूँ आगे भी रहूंगा और किसानों का हमने साथ दिया था किसानों के साथ भी कहते जो उनकी मांगे थी उन्होंने रखी और फिर आ, हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी ने कहते वापस ले ली तो तो जीत तो फिर किसानों की हुई और हमारी सरकार की हुई तो उनकी बात सुनी गई वहां पे तो हमारा कहते हैं स्पोर्ट उनके साथ पहले भी था भी हर आगे भी रहेगा और ये फाइनली ये जो रेसलर्स के मामले में मान लीजिए अगर ये ब्रिजभूषण को टिकट दे देते हैं आपकी पार्टी तो आप आ, उनके साथ फिर भी खड़े होंगे देखिए भैया हम मैं खिलाड़ी पहले हूँ और गलत को गलत कहता हूँ मैंने कहा था और सही को सही कहूंगा तो ऐसी नौबत आएगी नहीं मैं मैं जो मानता हूँ कि खिलाड़ियों के साथ अभी दोबारा अत्याचार नहीं होगा ऐसा कभी क्या पार्टी ने कुछ आपको कुछ आश्वासन दी है कि आपको कहीं से टिकट देंगे जी पार्टी में चले गए हैं तो कहते हैं ये उम्मीद छोड़ दीजिए कि पार्टी क्या देगी आप पार्टी को क्या दे रही है मैं लेकिन आपको कोई मतलब आश्वासन नहीं दिए कोई प्रॉमिस नहीं दिया गया है अभी तक कि आपको हरियाणा से नहीं, या कहीं नहीं, और से मेरे को मैं मैं मेरे को मैं मैंने कोई नहीं पूछा मैंने कहा कि जी मैं काम करना चाहता हूं और यही मेरा कहते उद्देश्य है और मैं चाहूंगा कि ज्यादा ज्यादा लोगों तक पहुंचूं और काम करूं दाद सर ऐसा कौन सा काम है जो आप बीजेपी में कर सकते हैं जो आप कांग्रेस पार्टी में नहीं कर पाए जी उनकी रीच बहुत बड़ी है और जो लोग पसंद कर रहे हैं दस साल से और तकरीबन और हम जो कहते जो हमारे काम रह गए जैसे यूथ का जैसे प्रोटेस्ट हुआ था रेसनल प्रोटेस्ट तो ये नहीं होता अगर हम होते तो उस चीज में तो फाइनली आपसे मैं पूछना चाहूंगा वजेंद्र भाई ये एक के ऊपर एक कांग्रेस के नेता जो हैं वो छोड़कर क्यों चले जा रहे हैं आप हो गौरव वल्लभ हो अभी हाल ही में बाकी सारे जो नेता छोड़ के चले जा रहे हैं क्यों चले जा रहे हैं कांग्रेस पार्टी से भैया हमने तो शुरुआत कर दी थी और उसके बाद तो लाइन लग गई अभी हर कोई <laughs> ना कोई आ रहा है देख लीजिए तो आपने तो, लाइन हाँ। की शुरुआत की उसके बाद बाकी सारे तो अमिताभ बच्चन का डायलॉग है ना लाइन वही से शुरू होती है जहाँ खड़े हो जाते हैं तो भैया उसके बाद तो लाइन लग गई हमारी जी तो बट कुछ बदलाव के लिए और कुछ तरक्की के लिए कहते हैं हिंदुस्तान की तरक्की के लिए लोग आ रहे हैं वो चाहते हैं कि उनकी आवाज़ सुने बिकॉज मेहनती लोगों की पार्टी है ये जो संघर्ष करके यहाँ तक पहुँचे हैं और तो वो एक बंदे का परिश्रम जानते हैं ओके विजेंद्र सिंह बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हमारे साथ जुड़ने के लिए वी विल बी इन टच विद यू थैंक यू वेरी मच लेट मी नाउ गो क्रॉस टू आर एक्सपर्ट नरेंद्र मेहता इज ऑल्सो ज्वाइनिंग आर सिंसो इज राशिद किद भाई न्यू हर्ड विजेंद्र सिंह लुक I I like I said at the top of the show Nalin I am willing to meet this argument halfway down that yes many of these leaders are leaving and joining BJP because of pressure of IT CBI ED Ashok Chavan is a classic case Rahul Gandhi even fact publicly said that Ashok Chavan met him and cried and said I don't want to go to jail and that's why I'm joining the BJP but what about Vijinder Singh what about uh, Sanjay Nirupam what about uh a god of wallah there's no known cases against these individuals and yet they are leaving so there's got to be some reason for it part of it could be that everybody feels congress is a sinking ship nobody wants to be part of a sinking ship or b that simply in a party that's been out of power there is no room to accommodate the personal ambitions of all of these individuals Uh, I, th- I think there are three or four reasons, Zaka, and you are spot on. The first part of the answer lies in what Vijinder said in the interview to you just now, where he said that BJP ki reach is very high. There, we can do more. So, I mean, essentially, if there were two, if you were, if there were not political parties, but there were companies, one is is looks like a sunset company, and the other one looks like a sunrise uh, sunrise company, which is which is rising. So, if there were two parties, then there is 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 there is
hold on to this high horse saying, you know, ideology and we are waging an ideological battle. But Russia, at the end of the day, in real politic, you need to be able to address people's real world ambitions. So if politicians can't be given, you know, tickets or, or chairmanships of various boards or, or various boards or, or being accommodated in some form or fashion in the organization, then people will leave. And what Nalin said is right. I mean, there used to be a time not so long ago where the Congress would at least make an attempt to stop these people. Today, I don't, e I don't even think they're making the attempt. They're like, if you don't believe, if you don't want uh, to be part of our ideology, you jolly well pack up and leave. Uh, Zaka, first of all, elections are a time of, you know, migratory birds. Every five years or every cycle of election, we see this, you know, people coming and going. That is not so disturbing. But as Dalit was saying, actually, there is a lack of institutional mechanism. There is no sense of, you know, ownership in, uh, you know, Ashwarya's party at this point of time. As long as Ahmed Patel was there, he was there, he would, uh, he would hear, uh, you know, people out, he would offer, you know, carrot and stick, he would do some kind of thing. Now, there is no, there is a lot of Jalebi culture. If somebody goes to Malika Arjun Kharge, Kharge would say or his staff would say, go and, uh, you know, speak to Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi would say, go and speak to Keshi Venu Gopal. Keshi Venu Gopal will say, go to Kharge. So, end of the day, anybody who is an aspirant or a ticket seeker or somebody, uh, you know, has nowhere to go. And, of course, the people are on short fuse. Like these three people we are talking about, uh, Sanjay Nirupam uh, and uh, Vijayendra Singh and uh, Gaurav uh, Vallabh, they were either newcomers or they were imports. So they, in any case, they lacked, you know, lacked, you know, any kind of, you know, firm commitment or ideology. But in the Congress, biggest problem is lack of ownership. You know, there is nobody who is in charge. Rahul Gandhi thinks it is Malikarjun Karge's baby. Malikarjun Karge thinks Rahul Gandhi represents the political leadership of the Congress. No, no, but what about the closest friends of Rahul Gandhi? Milan Deora, Jitin Prasada, Jyotir Aditya Sindhya are more than just ex-Congressmen. They are close friends of Rahul Gandhi. If Rahul Gandhi is not able to hold on to them, then why should anybody be part of the Congress party? And, and <laughs> like you said, you know, once again, politics cannot be a puritanical exercise. You believe in certain set of values, you can be in my party. No. I mean, politics, as somebody famously said, is the art of the possible. Yes, rightfully so, you can make the argument against the BJP or they are using threat and coercion and this and that to get everybody, all and sundry, into their party. <coughs> But the flip side of that argument is they are ideologically less flexible. They are saying, you know, winnability is the most important thing. So whoever has the chance to win, we'll bring them into our party, which is fair enough. That, that's, that's what politics is all about. So Zaka, in pol political loyalty is highly transactional. And second point is that is, there has to be, in the leadership uh, terms, there has to be fear and respect. In, in the present day Congress, there is an absence <coughs> of both. There is no fear and there is very little respect. And that is the difference. Look at that BJP people, uh, MPs who have been benched, MPs who had won, you know, over 3 lakh, 5 lakh, you know, margin, they have been benched. What are they doing? They are going to Facebook and saying that we don't want to contest. I can give you a lot of examples. So, that is also abnormal. But it is abnormal because the BJP leadership today represents fear and respect. Okay. In the Congress, there is the absence of these two things. I assure you, Mahadev, there is absence of fear and absence of leadership in your party. That's why people are leaving. I just had an extensive conversation with Vijender Singh. Again, like I said, he has no cases against him. There's no threat of any agency against him. But he still decided to leave your party and go. Why? Because exactly. clearly he seems to have hit some kind of a ceiling in your party. He doesn't seem to be able to grow in your party. You know, Zaka, I'm a Kanadiga, so in my limited understanding of Hindi, I think he said Pad as in a position or a place that what he wanted there. And in the converse, he said when he joined the BJP that he doesn't expect anything out of it. So I'm not going to see again. We wish everybody all the very best. It's not like nobody tried to retain him, whether it was campaigning, whether it was on the ground when he joined, whether it was his ticket. There was a lot of support forthcoming. But yes, he also conceded that there is a reach that the current dispensation has that the opposition parties don't have. We wish him all the very best. On the second, you know, when you say close friends and what not, you know, people who enjoyed power as ministers for the entire term of the UPA could not seem to, you know, ride out the rough storm when it came when we were out of power. And again, we wish them all the very best. And on the last part, 
I think it is absolutely shameful for anybody at any point to say that there is no respect and no authority in the Congress party. The fact that there is a certain portrayal that comes out in mainstream media does not change the fact that Malikarjun Kharge Saab is one of the tallest leaders, very well respected, has accommodated workers across even if you look at ticket distribution all across you see the amount of work that has happened and mr rahul gandhi also concedes that the authority of mr malikarjun karge and in terms of elections the cc is important See, there are a lot of pictures that can be painted for the convenience of people that have a certain amount of power to control the narrative, right? Where in the opposition, we do not have that. But to at any point say Malikarjun Kharge Saab is not in control is extremely, extremely disrespectful to a man of that stature. And for somebody as young as me, I have access to the Congress president, whether through letter or even to meet. And I know local workers across Rash, the country Rashid Rashid quick response and then I'll I'll come back to Dohini here in the studio yeah Rashid quick response yeah as per your difficulty she is doing a very difficult job a good job of a party spokesperson but everybody knows this whole everybody who leaves has a you know a thing or two to say about KC Vinay Gopal KC Vinay Gopal is fighting his own uh, you know parliamentary election there is nobody in Delhi gave example of Mr Ahmed Patel as long as he was there he was he acted as a cushion and people had respect and people of course uh, okay you know, all some, right some, that that's some, a yeah. that's a different debate but but let me come to Tuhin again you know Tuhin the the point that you know at one point of time the BJP used to be the party with a difference right. Today, there doesn't seem to be any difference. The very people that you railed and ranted against for corruption from Ajit Pawar to Praful Patel to Pratap Sarnayak are all now part of your party. So, what makes your party so different? You are, you know, what Congress used to be in the 90s, today you BJP know, uh, is. Zaka, we have still been very selective because if we open up our doors, 90% of the Congress party would be this side. So, we have still been hmm. very selective. But yes, you know, I mean, this these are going to be watershed elections. Uh, you know, many path-breaking things are path-breaking things are going to happen post that, for which we need a big, big and a huge majority. In any case, no, but why? I I'm trying to understand. People are also asking this. Two seventy-two is what you need to win. Why do you need four hundred? What are you going to do with four hundred? Well, a two-third majority al always helps. If you realize, if you notice it, we have already, you know, uh, st uh, started the campaign for 2029 by, by uh, getting inroads in states like Tamil Nadu and Kerala. There would be a huge room for expansion over there in 2029. So that's how BJP works. It works with a 10-year 10, 10 future, with a 10-year okay. vision in mind. And it, it was no, no, relentless. Again, I, I'm, I'm really, you know, a lot of people have been asking me this over the last few weeks. And since, you know, the Prime Minister on the floor of the Parliament said this, BJP target is 370 and NDA target is 400. Why, why do they need so many numbers? Well, we, they we just believe need 272 the, to win, right? We believe what, what, in the, what, are they, what are they planning for the third term that they need 370 and 400, Nalan? Well, we believe in the Nalan, one... Nalan. Okay, let, let him sure. Yeah. Nalin, Nalin, that, that question is to you, Nalin. Na, Nalin, if you can hear me, I, I, I was asking Tuhin here as well and I'm asking you this. Zaka, I can hear you now. Yeah, Sorry, the audio of, went for a bit. Could you lot of, the question? Lot of, the question, lot yes? of common people are asking, the target for any election should be 272. That's the simple majority, right? Why is the BJP hell-bent on getting hmm. 370 or 400 or 350 or whatever it is? What do they, why do they need those so many seats for? What is it that they're planning in their third term that they need such high numbers? So I think, uh, look, uh, look, look. I think, I think the the idea of char so up ki bar, char so par, or or the target of 370. A lot of that is also psyops, right? It's it's so it's uh, it's it's about creating a hava. It's about creating a momentum before the election, saying that look, there is a BJP blitzkrieg coming, and and uh, and others are not are not up to it. Now, where will those seats come from? We've had debates on this channel on your program many times, Zaka, on on where the headroom for growth of BJP is. But I, and there is it is a legitimate question that what can the BJP do? with 370 seats conceivably that it can't do with 303 seats but that that's beside the point i think this is all part of the posturing before the election it's also about rejuvenating the cadre it's also about, about getting the cadres up and about and getting them excited towards the target in an election that does not otherwise seem to be a contest no before i come back to tuhin rashid i think i think there is something that we are all missing here because Clearly, they have something in mind. The Prime Minister went to Odisha, was trying for this alliance with the BJD. It didn't happen, of course. That's a different matter altogether. Uh, alliances in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, they were, again, trying very hard for AIDMK. That did not happen. 
there seems to be some thinking about why the BJP needs two-thirds majority in the next term. I think Zaka, everyone knows that answer, but nobody wants to spell it out uh, uh, so directly. Uh, let me attempt it. It is. It has to do with kind of why do you need uh, two-third or three-fourth of majority in parliament? Obviously, to make you know uh, basic structural sweeping changes in Indian constitution. That's the long and short of it. Is it, Tuhi? Well, Zaka, for the first time, a prime minister has given a vision for the next 20, 25 years. And in this journey of the next 20, 25, each of the succeeding five years becomes very important. So a robust government, a government which can take strong decisions becomes very important. You know, 10 years ago, people of this country, people of Bharat used to vote for change when they wanted improvement. Now they want to vote for continuity because they are convinced that this is the government the, the country needed always. So when Aishwarya, Rai's, uh, Aishwarya Mahadev's party, sorry, very, very sorry about that. Aishwarya Mahadev's party says, you know, there's democratic backsliding, democracy is in danger. People don't seem to be thinking so, Aishwarya. People seem to be giving 303, 350, 370, what have you. That's not democracy in danger. A, a few responses. I think they want that number to overcome the last unprecedented number that we saw from the Congress because they would like to cement the so-called legacy. On the second hand, you know, the BJP does enough, even without the numbers, they suspend enough MPs to get by on things. But lastly, when Tuhin says, you know, look for the 20, 30 years in the future, if you look at the Prime Minister's recent speeches, I have seen mentions of former Prime Ministers for decades before I was even born. As the priority that he talks about an absolute Absolutely nothing else. When you talk about vision for the future, when you talk about economic development or infrastructure, you know, which they say is part of their Vikas, Achede, Namrit Kal, the other Kal that I see going around, they still go down to the south and talk about consecration. They talk about symbolic staffs in pol parliament. They talk about what happened between a particular country there. They talk about the cultural hegemony that needs to exist. So tell me, where is the vision? The Prime Minister's entire election campaign, including his entire ministry, is run on division, on putting down the opposition and absolutely no, no positive future agenda. If you have so much development, make your government or your election plan development. Don't come and lie. Don't talk about incendiary statements of what the opposition has done. Get no, no, to talk the about the BJP's singular slogan has been Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas. Where is Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas when you see a systematic cutting down of SCST sub plan, when you see a systematic cutting down of education in the backward sector, even in the healthcare sector, I can give you statistics to the fact that this government today will put out fertilizer and rice bags with the Prime Minister's face. But when my state needed it for the poorest of the poor, they refused to give it and tried to sell it at a throwaway price to basically for molasses and okay. ethanol to be produced. To, so to where are you, you know, Jaka, yeah. the Congress... Let, let to in respond. The there Congress... Is no got it. Got it. I should let, let to in. Let, well, Zaka, to in respond. The Congress party is understandably very selective in its assimilation of important issues. So, you know, for, uh, let me remind the Congress spokesperson over here, these are what we are go fighting these elections on. Infrastructure, 70% increase in national highways, stretch of national highways in the last 10 years. From uh, 74 airports in 2014, we have 148 airports now, 700 new, 700 kilometers of new metro lines and in fact Bangalore, the city where you are right now is one of the biggest beneficiary of this transformation. 13 crore tap water connection, 50 crore Jandhan accounts of which 60% are women. These are the issues on which we are fighting the elections. But yes, if you have committed blunders in the past that need to be highlighted. Because, you know, you, th th that particular island, Kachativu, holds huge significance for India. Thousands of Indian fishermen have suffered because of that. And that the truth of how it was given away by Congress party okay. needs to be told very, to the Very people. quickly, 30 seconds, Ashwara. I have to wrap up. 30 seconds, no more, please. You know, this is the sort of selective narrative they talk about. You know why the highways are double is because they started double counting the lanes where every lane counts as one kilometer instead of the four lanes. You talk about the metro in my Karnataka state being a beneficiary 10 days after Prime Minister Modi inaugurated it. You saw it flooded and you saw people getting harmed. You talk about Jandan accounts. You want to talk about how many vacancies or how many empty bank accounts are there and you're still charging poor farmers for not maintaining balance even though Okay. Your government has not given them the Kisan Sanjay right. or whatever that scheme is. I there is a lot of selective lies and post truth of the BJP. I People are finding out which I is what I have to leave it at that. I want to thank all our guests. Uh, thank you, Aishwarya.
Thank you to Ian for making this extra effort to come to our studios. Rashid and Nalan, of course, for joining us. They'll continue to be part of our election coverage. But I want to move on to a piece of breaking news that's just coming in. The Guardian newspaper in London is now making some stunning revelations which claim that at least 20 Pakistan-based terrorists may have been eliminated by India on Pakistani soil in the last five years. This is as per the Guardian investigation that's been based on dossiers uh, which, show, which were shown by Pakistani intelligence officials and corroborated by Indian officials. As per the Guardian, this is an Indian policy framed after the Pulwama terror attack in 2019. As per the Guardian report, the first to be targeted was Zahur Mistri, who was accused in the 1999 Air India hijack. Now, like I said, the Guardian report goes on to highlight another dozen plus names who Pakistani officials have told this particular Guardian reporter were targeted by Indian uh, external intelligence agencies. Now, this is the claim which has been put forth in this piece. This is certainly going to have resonance in the election season as well. Let me now go across to our political editor, Aman Sharma, who's now joining us. Aman, what significance does this report have, and particularly as it does come in election season? Uh, well, Zakasi, India has always maintained that it has had no official role in any of these, you know, killings which happened earlier. The allegations have come from Canada as well, that there is no clear evidence to link any Indian official agency to any of these killings which are happening abroad. But of course, when it comes to election season, Zaka, clearly it bolsters the India's no-nonsense approach towards terror, especially in the last uh, six years, I could say, after the two surgical uh, strikes were carried out in Pakistan, first a surgical strike uh, in, uh, in 2019, followed by another one. Uh, you know, the, we saw the Balakot air strikes also happening. So two surgical strikes carried out inside uh, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Pakistan by India to uh, demolish the terrorist bases there, to attack the terrorists. India's approach in those strikes was very clear that we are attacking the terrorists, not the civilians of Pakistan. And this is a strike carried out to take out the terror infrastructure in Pakistan. If all the allegations and all the claims that I'm mean put in the Guardian report are true, it seems India uh, has carried on with that approach when it comes to those who are attacking uh, uh, attacking Indian civilians on our soil from abroad. But of course, India will never, India will always cite that there is no official evidence regarding this. But in an election season, of course, it only bolsters India's image that, you know, the Narendra Modi government has gone to all lengths to secure the country's homeland and it come, when it comes to attacking our enemies abroad, be it the terrorist elements, India will go to any length to ensure that uh, the Indians attacked in terrorist attacks get justice. So, so like you said, Aman, very quickly, there are two parts to this. One, domestically, and, and we all remember in 2019 after the Balakot strikes, the common refrain was, uh, Ghuske Mara Hai. Uh, because of the Balakot strikes went into Pakistan, hit targets inside Pakistan. So that became a big, uh, even a vote determining issue, I would say, in 2019. That is one part of it. But given what we are seeing just in the last few months over the Nijjar case and then the Pannu case, uh, pressure from Canada and from the United States, do you see this article by The Guardian uh, sort of putting more pressure on India diplomatically from the likes of the US or Canada or other countries who have been making this accusation against India that they are trying to target inimical interests on foreign soil? Well, yes, the effort seems to be that that because, you know, they, I think the article is trying to question what they are terming as, you know, extrajudicial killings abroad, you know, are these sanctioned by our intelligence agencies or not? But, you know, I think, Zaka, we have to make a differentiation here between, you know, the likes of Hardeep Singh Nijjar in Canada or be it Pakistan because Pakistan has always maintained that it is not harboring any terrorist elements on its soil. So India can always say that, you know, there is a plausible deniability to any such attack carried out or any such operation carried out by India when Pakistan is not harboring any terrorists in the first place, as Pakistan claims. But I think when it comes to Pakistan, you know, the domestic electoral benefits of the same, the domestic emotions that are here, you know, which will work in an election season, is that the Modi government is going to any lengths, uh, you know, to secure the homeland. And uh, if it comes to terrorist elements anywhere, be it in Pakistan or be it anywhere else, uh, India will do what it best can in this case. And we must remember Prime Minister Narendra Modi's earlier words that, you know, we will not go to plead uh, to foreign nations to save us after a big terror attack. We will not talk in a language which Pakistan understands. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Raman Sharma, for joining us with your thoughts and perspective on this big explosive story by The Guardian newspaper. I'm sure there'll be reactions uh, galore 
over the next few hours and we'll be bringing that to you here on CNN News 18. Right now, let's shift focus to the other uh, story, the exodus from the Congress into the BJP. One of them, one of the latest, in fact, to make that switch from the Congress camp to the BJP, or at least uh, that is the speculation that he'll be joining one of the NDA parties, is former Congress leader Sanjay Nirupam. He was expelled yesterday from the Congress party. He's now taken a direct shot against the Congress High Command for being rudderless. He has said there are multiple camps and lobbies within the Congress leadership. Uh, he says there is a Kharge camp, there is a Rahul Gandhi camp, Sonia Gandhi camp. And I asked him for a party that he's been associated with and he's got a lot from that party, whether it's an MP ticket, whether it is Mumbai Congress chief uh, post. Why has it taken him 20 years to decide and get this awakening, get this conscience call to leave the Congress party. This is the exclusive conversation that I had with Sanjay Nirupam. So over the last four or five years, and particularly in the last few months or so, there's been an exodus of Congress leaders into the BJP. You've had the likes of Naveen Jindal, Ashok Chavan, and now of course the latest happens to be Sanjay Nirupam and Gaurav Vallav as of today in the last 24 hours. Let me now go across to one of those leaders uh, who is a tall leader of the Mumbai Congress, uh, used to be in the Congress for the last 20 years. Sanjay Nirupam is now joining us. Sanjay ji, thank you very much for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. You've been a lifelong congressman. Uh, you've contested from the Congress party's ticket. You've been Mumbai Congress chief. After 20 years of association with the Congress party, why are you leaving that party today? Because the Congress party has completely changed now. Congress party's leadership, which are handling the party affairs in Delhi, are completely disconnected with the ground reality. The leadership which has been installed in the state, at Mumbai level and Maharashtra level, they don't bother for your uh, leaders in the state. And the trigger point was the way seat sharing uh, uh, discussion went on uh, in Mumbai with Shiv Sena. That was a disaster. The, our leaders who were participating in the seat sharing discussions, they actually completely surrendered before Shiv Sena and Shiv Sena dictated its terms over the Congress party. And that is why out of six seat, Congress party has given or loss to Shiv Sena, total five seats. Out of six, five seats we have given to Shiv Sena. In that situation, the, the workers of Congress party were very much disturbed and they, they, they felt disappointed. Even I felt disappointed and I was uh, basically working in my constituency. Without taking me into confidence, they have surrendered that seat to Shiv Sena. And that is why I raised this issue and I, uh, I, I tried to spoke to the leadership. Nobody responded properly. Nobody said me anything. And finally, finally, when nobody, nobody, nobody uh, uh, responded to me and my all efforts to, uh, to, communicate, uh, to communicate with the leadership failed, then I went to the media and I announced. And in the meantime, in the meantime, Shiv Sena, without consulting Congress party, announced its own, cons own candidate as the MBA candidate from my constituency. And that guy was a, that, why, that guy is a, a, a scamster. He is under ED probe. He is a khichdi chur. There was a scheme by BMC which provided a free food to the poor people during COVID uh, okay. regime and COVID period. And, and, and in that period, this guy got a commission and this guy basically did a lot of hanky-panky thing in, in that whole, uh, whole But But Sanjay ji, tell me scheme. this. You so, have so been... One person, one no, person, one you, person. One, you, one minute. Yeah, yeah. One, one minute, one minute, one minute. One person who is under the probe of ED cannot become our candidate, who is a known khichdi chore, cannot become our candidate. That is what I said. And just to save the party interest, just, but, just in the interest of the party. But, but tell but me, Sanjay ji, you, you, you have been with the Congress party for the last 20 years. MP ticket bhi mila aapko, Mumbai Congress chief bane aap. Finally, after 20 years, now you are coming and saying there are five lobbies. Kharge lobby hai, Sonia Gandhi lobby hai, Rahul Gandhi lobby hai. Why didn't you say this when you were in the party? As I said, the, 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 the lobby of the lobby is not a good thing. It is not a good thing. It is not a good 
आफ्टर 2019 एक पार्टी के अंदर भयंकर डीजेनरेशन शुरू हुआ पर्टिकुलरली आफ्टर राहुल गांधी रिजाइनिंग फ्रॉम द कांग्रेस प्रेसिडेंट पोस्ट तब तो लगभग दो साल तक तो कांग्रेस का कोई प्रेसिडेंट ही नहीं था इस बीच नई नई ताकतें निकल के आ गई और आज हालात ये हैं कि पार्टी में कोई एक पावर सेंटर नहीं है और उसको हम लगातार अनुभव कर रहे थे और पिछले दो तीन वर्षों से जब हम दिल्ली जा रहे थे और दिल्ली में लोगों से मिल करके अपनी बात कहने की कोशिश कर रहे थे तो ये ऐसा महसूस हुआ कि ये पांच पांच पावर सेंटर बन गए हैं सबके अपने अपने ग्रुप है अपने अपने कोटरी अपने अपने लॉबी है और वो लॉबी पार्टी के इंटरेस्ट में नहीं बल्कि अपनी अपनी लॉबी के इंटरेस्ट में अपने अपने लीडर के इंटरेस्ट में कर रहे हैं और उसमें भयंकर कॉन्फ्लिक्ट चल रहा है और वो जो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट है उसमें मेरे जैसे बहुत सारे निर्दोष लोग जो अपने अपने स्टेट में काम करने वाले लोग जमीन पे काम करने वाले लोग हैं उनके साथ एक तरह से खिलवाड़ हो रहा है उनकी सुनवाई नहीं हो रही है सिर्फ मैं आज कह रहा हूं मतलब यह मत सोचिए कि कांग्रेस पार्टी से बाहर निकलने के बाद कह रहा हूं ऐसे बहुत सारे लोग हैं जो कांग्रेस पार्टी में इस तरह की थिंकिंग रख रहे हैं और इस तरह की चीजें महसूस कर रहे हैं लेकिन पार्टी में रहते हुए उनकी मजबूरी है कि सारी बातें वो नहीं कह पा रहे लेकिन संजय जी संजय जी ये बताइए ये बताइए You, you, you are saying, you know, Shiv Sena, you have Congress party has surrendered to Shiv Sena. Five out of six seats in Bombay, they've given to Shiv Sena. But is he Shiv Sena or is he NCP? के साथ आपने सरकार भी चलाई है डेढ़ साल तक. तब आपने कुछ नहीं बताया. अगर आप particularly मेरे बारे में बात कर रहे हैं, तो आप थोड़ा सा अपना research कर लीजिए. 2019 में जब Shiv Sena और Congress का alliance हो रहा था, at that time I was the only person in Congress party who openly said. That Congress party should not ally with Shiv Sena. Should not have any alliance with Shiv Sena. It will be disastrous for us. And as that disaster is being seen, this is what I said in 2019. Sir, on record, you can see. But Sanjay ji, this is also the allegation on the BJP is that you IT, CBI, ED, all of them. In Maharashtra, some 20 leaders in the last five years have switched over from Shiv Sena or NCP or <coughs> Congress and joined BJP. तो आप एजेंसीज के प्रेशर लगा दो ये सब लोग बीजेपी में आ जाएंगे कांग्रेस और बाकी विपक्ष को पार्टी का मानना यह है कि बीजेपी इज सम काइंड ऑफ वॉशिंग मशीन तो आप भी वॉशिंग मशीन में मतलब आपको भी डाल दिया गया क्या वॉशिंग मशीन में जाने की मजबूरी जो तथाकथित वॉशिंग मशीन है उसमें जाने की मजबूरी उनको पड़ती है जिनके ऊपर कोई आरोप होते हैं मैं एकदम बेदाग हूं मेरे ऊपर कोई इनकम टैक्स का केस नहीं कोई सीबीआई का केस नहीं कोई ईडी का केस नहीं है तो कृपया करके मेरे ऊपर इस प्रकार का आरोप मत लगाइए और बाकी जिन लोगों के बारे में आप कह रहे हैं उनके बारे में भी एक सही रिसर्च करके सचमुच उनके ऊपर कोई केस है या नहीं है उन केसों के बारे में क्या हो रहा है यह जानकारी लेकर ही कहें लेकिन आपने जो आपने जो एजेंसियों के जो एजेंसी के दुरुपयोग की बात कर रहे हैं यह ऐसा नहीं है कि ऐसा पहली बार एजेंसी का उपयोग या दुरुपयोग हो रहा है जब जब सरकारें आती हैं सरकार सरकारी एजेंसियों का एक इस्तेमाल या सरकारी एजेंसियों के जरिए एक भ्रष्टाचार पर नियंत्रण रखने का एक प्रयास या प्रयत्न उस समय की सरकारें करती रही है उसमें कभी कभी हो सकता है हाई हैंडेडनेस भी हुआ होगा लेकिन इन एजेंसियों का एक प्राथमिक तौर पर काम यह है कि भ्रष्टाचार को नियंत्रित किया जाए और यह नियंत्रित करने की दिशा में जो भी भ्रष्टाचारी होते हैं वो पकड़े जाते हैं उसमें जिन लोगों के बारे में आप जो एक लिस्ट बता रहे हैं वो सचमुच वो केस आ नहीं था केस में कितना दम था नहीं था इसकी जानकारी मेरे पास नहीं है अगर आपके पास हो तो उसका no, संजय जी टेल मी दिस कांग्रेस लीडर्स पर्टिकुलरली इन महाराष्ट्र अशोक चौहान देन मिलिन दियोरा देन योरसेल्फ व्हाई आर कांग्रेस लीडर्स ऑल गोइंग टू द बीजेपी यू हैव फॉर्ट बीजेपी फॉर्ट बीजेपी इज आइडियोलॉजी फॉर द लास्ट 20 इयर्स कुछ तो गड़बड़ है ना नहीं गड़बड़ उधर नहीं है गड़बड़ कांग्रेस में है कांग्रेस में जो लीडरशिप लीडर्स हैं उनकी सुनवाई नहीं हो रही है उनकी योग्यता को 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 जो रिकॉग्निशन मिलना चाहिए वो रिकॉग्निशन नहीं मिल रहा है उनकी योग्यता के अनुसार पार्टी में कोई पॉलिटिकल स्पेस नहीं मिल रहा है तो ऐसे में वो रेस्टलेसनेस महसूस करते हैं और उसके बाद वो कोई दूसरी जगह ढूंढते जाओ उनको थोड़ा स्पेस मिल सके क्योंकि हर पॉलिटिकल वर्कर या लीडर एक थोड़ा सा स्पेस चाहता है अगर उससे उसका स्पेस छीन लेंगे तो वो निश्चित तौर पर उस पार्टी में कंफर्टेबल फील नहीं करेगा यही वजह है कि बहुत सारे लोग अपने अलग अलग कांग्रेस पार्टी छोड़कर अलग 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 पार्टियों में जाने का प्रयत्न कर रहे हैं ताकि उनको कोई स्पेस मिले प्लेटफॉर्म मिले और वहां से जो उनकी मन की इच्छा है समाज सेवा करने की राजनीति करने की लोगों से जुड़ के काम करने की वो कर सके 
Now, a final question. This is a little personal question. You are saying one of the reasons you are going is because Congress party has surrendered to Shiv Sena. Uh, six or five seats Shiv Sena gave to Mumbai mein and so on and so forth. But ultimately, bottom line reason is that you have not given a ticket. That's why you are going. Now, tell me this. Who is this party that is giving you the ticket? Is it Shinde Sena or BJP? Who is giving you the ticket? 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 Who is आपको टिकट नहीं दी गई इसलिए आप कर रहे हैं ये सब आई एम स्टिल ए राइटफुल क्लेमेंट ऑफ ऑफ दिस सीट बट इन द फ्यूचर व्हाट विल हैपन आई डोंट नो सो वेट फॉर सम टाइम लेट यू नो वन फाइनल वर्ड मिस्टर गोविंदा हु यू फॉट अगेंस्ट एंड यू वन अगेंस्ट ही इज आल्सो अ क्लेमेंट तो उसके बारे में क्या बताएंगे वेरी वेरी क्विकली मैं उनके अगेंस्ट तो कभी चुनाव नहीं लड़ा था वो मेरे पहले नॉर्थ मुंबई के एमपी थे उसके बाद मैं वहां का एमपी बना और आगे भी मेरी उनके साथ कोई राइवल नहीं वो बहुत बड़े बहुत बड़े एक्टर हैं गोविंदा जी हम तो एक छोटे मोटे पॉलिटिकल वर्कर हैं साहब हमारी क्या राइवल होगी ओके संजय निरुपम थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर स्पीकिंग विदेस्ट फॉर योर फ्यूचर पोलिटिकल एंडेवर्स थैंक यू सो दैट वॉज आर न्यूज मेकर टूनाइट संजय निरुपम हु इज नाउ शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम द कांग्रेस पार्टी uh we don't know which political party or political entity he's going to just yet but he is saying he's disillusioned with mumbai congress with the maharashtra congress and the functioning of uh, the party there and that's why he is now quitting uh who he goes to whether it is bjp shinde sena ncp we don't know yet but we will see how that story plays out in maharashtra The simple thing: Why is there no AFSPA in Karnataka? Why is there no AFSPA in in Andhra Pradesh or in Maharashtra? Because the situation there does not warrant the need for a, an Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Whereas in Kashmir, there there is there was a situation that certainly was a situation which warranted the need to keep AFSPA. Remember, viewers, Ansari has immense political clout over the Muslim vote, not just in Banda but across Uttar Pradesh. Was it this that the opposition should be seen to be siding with this A grade thug? The courts have also remarked that why are you coming to us now when it was your own lackadaisical no, attitude? You didn't respond to the IT notices in the past. Maybe you thought you could get away with it. Why are you playing the political victim card here? Is it not Congress's own doing if you couldn't handle your tax matters? What does this have to do with democracy? The enforcement directorate had sent nine summons to him. You may call them illegal and unlawful, but if you and I were summoned, if the common man was summoned by the enforcement directorate or any other agency, we could not have gotten away by calling it unlawful and illegal. Presented by. Hello and welcome to Know Your Neta and I am today coming to you from the tea plantation in Wayanad and I am going to make you meet an interesting neta this is her electoral debut this is uh, the first time that she is going to contest the elections she has been an activist for over decades altogether for over 3 decades altogether and she is also the wife of a prominent veteran politician i am talking about none other than Annie Raja over here ma'am thank you for speaking with us beautiful beautiful scenery that uh, you are in here i want to ask by starting by asking that why wynad why did you choose wynad to be your first electoral place to contest election you see uh, for all these years my party the communist party of india cpi hmm. uh, has given me or other organizational work hmm. and now the party and the left front hmm. Uh, asked me to contest the uh, election and they have decided it is not my selection mm. but by the party's uh, decision and the ldf's decision mm. uh, to contest from here 
so that's why i'm here so you have always been an activist all through your life uh how did you think that i should now enter into the electoral fray i should be a politician now because you have been a voice of marginalized why the shift suddenly no it's not a, a shift actually hmm. you see when i uh, raise voice or i stand with the uh, the people hmm. whether it is in manipur whether it is in uh, jammu kashmir whether it is in uh, jabua whether it is in uh, uh, orissa whether it is in gujarat hmm. uh, it's a political work actually yes. so uh, it is for to ensure their um, uh, rights hmm. uh, as citizens of this country hmm. that is the politic hmm. that is a political work so uh, it, the, the contesting election and this is a different form of political activity hmm. so i uh, now so far my uh, political activity was something different yes. and now party and left wing had asked me to do this political work mm. so i am here all right yeah. when we talk about wayanad what is something that you are willing to give to the people of wayanad what is the developmental work that you are planning to do if you get elected as the mp you see uh, uh, since the this constituency was uh, uh, established mm. Uh, it was always uh, it was UDF all the three yes. time last three yes. times, and uh, unfortunately uh, for the people of this uh, constituency, the representatives never bothered about the development of this constituency, and uh, uh, the issues. When I, I am here for more than a uh, month now, mm. uh, interacting with the uh, people, you can see this uh, uh, even mm. plantation yes. workers and yes. all. so i interact with them and i ask them uh, what do you expect from uh, me as mm. a candidate mm. so i get a feedback from i take feedback from these uh, every sections of people and uh, and through that what i have come to know is that ki and present uh, uh, issue which is bothering the people in this constituency is the man yes. animal conflict yes, so to find a uh, yes uh, lasting solution mm. the need of the hour is to bring an amendment to the existing law mm. that will happen can happen only in parliament mm. not in state assemblies mm. so people are uh, asking me will you uh, take up this issue mm. i said yes if once you if you elect me vote me uh, and elect me as a your representative definitely i will do that's why you are electing uh, any mm. representative representative and what people are saying uh, this is one issue another issue is the railway line yes. uh, then the next one is this uh, uh, night curfew uh, 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 to uh, this thing and uh, the the traffic uh, in uh, this um, uh, the, the uh, when you re, uh, you travel hmm. uh, to the uh, hills, hills uh, then the there is issue, yeah, traffic yes, issues yes, so these are all core issues which are so important for the overall development of this uh, constituency mm. so people are asking please take up all these issues we will stand with you we will uh, what uh, 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 then i asked uh, ki uh, 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 ms rahul gandhi was here mm. and uh, then they said some places even these women mm. they were so angry and they were very angrily asked me will you be here with us if mm. we vote you uh, mm. and elect me you or uh, will you come only in the next election mm. i asked why you people are asking me like this why you are angry mm. then they said no uh, uh, he came here and people said he will be the next prime minister okay he could not uh, become the prime minister but at least he could have come here and uh, 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 part of uh, our sorrows our difficulties mm. he could have been in we never had any such opportunity so mm. people are uh, so uh, saddened mm. people are uh, feeling betrayed mm. and people expect and they demand that i must be with them mm. so i tell them i in, in before i request for their vote mm. uh, for me mm. i tell them that i give an assurance uh, that i will be if you elect me as your representative i will be mm. staying, staying in here. this mm. uh, constituency okay. yeah. when we talk about rahul gandhi do you think he has done enough for this constituency in past 5 years and also when we talk about man human conflict he says that i have written letters uh to uh, you know uh, the concerned ministers but i have not got any response from the central ministry do you think he has done enough when it comes to why not no uh, that uh, assessment will have to be done by the electorate here hello namaskar this is first post and you're watching vantage with me palki sharma <laughs> Two wars 
and more than 30 conflicts. That's our world today. What can be scarier? The entry of artificial intelligence in the battlefield. Apparently, it's happening as we speak. Israel is said to be using an AI soldier called Lavender. Ukraine is using AI-powered drones. The US is using AI to strike West Asian targets. China's PLA is developing AI capabilities. How advanced are these systems? 